Jake here for American Trucks, and in this video, I'm taking a look at the Bilstein B8 5100 series rear shock for zero to one inch lift, fitting 2009 to 2018 four wheel drive Ram 1500s without air ride, excluding the Rebel models. Upgrading your shocks is an excellent way to improve both the ride and handling characteristics of your truck. And the B8-5100s here from Bilstein make a huge difference in how your truck performs. Whether you're at stock ride height or running up to one inches of lift in the rear, it does it all for an affordable price. I don't like to mince words when it comes to suspension modifications. And when it comes to getting some kind of lift or level on your truck, yes, we all want the look, but it's gotta ride and perform well too. And nobody does ride and handling quite like Bilstein. Now, I've held Bilsteins on a few of my own vehicles, including a set of these B8-5100s, and I gotta tell you, they never fail to impress. Now, this shock is set up for a stock ride height truck or one that has up to one inch of lift in the rear. And if you're gonna have variants like that, you've gotta have the damping to match. Otherwise, the ride and handling is gonna be compromised. But Bilstein, of course, has you covered there. The B8-5100 features digressive valving technology, so that allows the shock to instantly react to impacts and varying road surfaces. Inside the shock body, there are velocity-sensitive digressive floating pistons. Those allow for more variability in both rebound compression and also in travel. And that's just gonna add up to more control out on the street or the trail. Now, despite being a non-adjustable monotube shock without a remote reservoir, the damping here is excellent, and you can definitely feel the difference in body control versus stock. This is not gonna ruin the ride quality by any means, which is important in a Ram that has really good ride quality to begin with. In fact, this stays pretty much the same as it does stock. It just may be a bit more firm and again, more controlled. It's a shock that really doesn't compromise any way. So whether you're out on the street, hitting the trail, or you're just hauling a bunch of stuff around, this shock is gonna be up to the task and it's not gonna let you down. Construction as is typical with Bilstein's offerings is excellent. You get a 46 millimeter diameter shock body and it's zinc plated for durability and good looks. Inside you've got a chromed and hardened piston rod and that velocity sensitive digressive floating piston which we were discussing a few moments ago. You also get new OEM grade bushings at the mounting points both top and bottom giving you everything you need to replace your shock. So this is just gonna bolt right into the place of your stock one. Now Bilstein also backs this up with a lifetime warranty against defects and I can tell you from experience, they're good about honoring that. Just make sure you save your receipt. Pricing is gonna come in at about $150 per shock. And as you've definitely noticed by now, I've only got one shock up here on the table because these are sold separately. So make sure you make that quantity too. When you go to buy them, you'll need one for each side and you do want to replace these in pairs. Now that $150 price point puts these in about the middle of the range price-wise, and to me that seems to be about right. Since you aren't getting things like adjustable damping or remote reservoir, you are saving a bit on cost there, but these are still gonna provide excellent damping and control and the ability to help level out your truck too. So if you're shopping for shocks and you aren't looking to lift it up to the sky, you really can't go wrong with these. Now there's also a matching front shock of this same series available, and that's gonna even allow you to level out the front end of your truck without anything additional. And I would highly recommend doing these together. Having these on the front and rear is gonna make a big improvement in how your truck drives and behaves, and I think you'll be pretty happy once you've got that setup done. Installation will get a one out of three on our difficulty meter and it should take you about one hour per shock. Now, since the rear of the Ram is not a coilover setup, you just need to unbolt your stock shock absorber and bolt this one in its place. And you're gonna repeat the same process for the other one that you've bought on the other side. Now, aside from taking off the wheel and jacking the truck up, it's really a two bolt job, pretty straightforward. Definitely something you can accomplish at home. And to show you the process, let's hand things over to one of our AT customers right now. All right. And here's the tools we'll be using uh, to change the shocks on a Ram 1500 uh, 2017 variety. Um, I'm going to start with a couple different uh, ratchets. Uh, I'm going to need a 7 8 socket or two. You might need two, um, one for each of your ratchets. I'm just showing one. You'll need a 21 millimeter or two uh, sockets as well. Um, you know, ext various extensions help out, uh, just sometimes just to get the right leverage, to get the wrenches in the right spot. Um, I used a, a little pry bar, can really help in getting the, the shocks into position when you install them. Uh, Anti-seize, I use that to, on any metal to metal 
areas, uh, you know, specifically for this install between the bushing and the shock bolts. A uh, big impact wrench is handy um, if you have it uh, to help get those uh, bolts loose the first time. Um, if you're in a rusty environment, that can be uh, make it easy. Um, you'll also need a 5 16 driver bit uh, and either an electric screwdriver or um, if you have if you don't have an electric screwdriver, uh, just one of those. Uh, screwdrivers that has the end where you can put the hex into. Um, and then I also had a, an extra impact driver um, just to kind of help uh, set the bolt, bolts um, after you install without kind of over torquing them, where this guy will do the big torque. You also need uh, to make it a little bit easier, uh, well, really to get the tire off, um, you'll need a jack stand over here. Um, and then uh, some jack stands as well uh, to secure the truck uh, once you get it up in the air um, you'll lower the jack stands or the truck onto the jack stand. Step two is to remove the fender liner and we need to get rid of the fender liner because the shock here goes all the way up and is really hard to reach without removing the liner. In total there's 10 bolts and they use a 5 16 driver bit to remove. That was eight around the perimeter. And then there's two holding the fender liner against the frame. So on this truck, back in the corner, there was a hidden bolt. So that would make 11. Another thing to be careful of is if you fall, if these clips fall out, and make sure to put them back in so you don't lose them. There's the other one right there. So now you can see we got access to that upper bolt. This is the head of the bolt. Back behind here is the nut, and that's going to be tough to get to. However, someone already came up with a solution. You can fiddle around with that back there, or a company called Thurin Manufacturing, I had to check the name, makes these little uh, flags. And it's a flag, like you'd see on other trucks with hidden bolts. Uh, that you can kind of slide in the back. So we'll see how well this works. I haven't tried it the old-fashioned way, just trying to wiggle a wrench in there. So I'm gonna do it uh, the way someone did it and designed this. The other one's easy to get to without my light being in the way. Oh, and your classic one, right there. We'll start with the bottom. So, these are 20 millimeter, 21 millimeter sockets. So 
So, we'll remove this bottom bolt. You gotta make sure your wrenches are set the right direction. Once those wrenches are set the right direction, it comes apart pretty easy with the right impact. And there's our bottom one. Take a look at the threads. Make sure when you removed it, you didn't smash any of the threads. Uh, and the inside looks good. And when I'm working on stuff, especially with a lot of bolts, I'll try to thread the old bolts where they belong. Especially if I'm reusing them. That can help out a lot just remembering where stuff is. Luckily for this install, you got five lug nuts and two bolts. Should be pretty easy to remember those. And now we will work on those upper bolts. All right. So I'm gonna take this Theron manufacturing deal. And it just clipped on right there. All right. Move everybody over a little bit. Make some room. And now if all goes to plan, that turn that little tool will help us get it off the back. I think one of the challenges uh, of using a uh, regular wrench is going to be that just on the other side it's hard to see because of the, the fuel line or the fuel filler is uh it's kind of like captured the nuts captured um you'll either need a really tiny short 21 millimeter uh, uh open end wrench box end wrench um, or you'll need to uh sacrifice uh one to the great automotive gods and, and chop it off uh, so that you can get it to fit in there um I would imagine that cutting it off, uh, you'll be able to just kind of leave it in there um, and it'll push against the bracket itself, um, kind of like this flag does. Uh, but uh, those third manufacturing deals aren't, aren't too, too bad considering uh, comparing it to uh, having to sabotage, or not sabotage, destroy a box and wrench. Um, and then you kind of, it has a single purpose as well. The nice part about the Thurns is they also come with a uh, two-pack of these that are pre-assembled um, and that nut is smashed in there so it's not coming out. Um, so the next time you get around to doing the rear shocks, you uh, can reuse this guy. So there's another benefit to buying that kit. Um, and it's also new hardware. A lot of times new hardware is good to use. It's going to get loud. We're going to take those rears off, or the uppers off. Did that go? All right, Ew. there's our little bracket. I think it came free. Let's see if we can get that bolt out. to get a little creative. We'll be using a 7 socket and a lot of power. Now the bolt's free. And we can check to make sure it's free by checking the nut. So, uh, you know, pretty corroded up there. Uh, that fender liner must really, even here uh, where I'm at, uh, you saw how Relatively rust free this truck is. Um, I'm a second owner. It came from out east, so there's still some rust. Uh, and it was a work truck, lots of dust. Uh, white dust, I don't know where they were working. Um, but uh, yeah, so there's the old vault. Slide that out and let the shock fall. All right, 
we'll be back to install the new one. And uh, we'll start by putting the shock in the upper mount. Makes it a little bit easier to uh, push on the shock to get it in position. And remember, keep those bolts where you can see them. And we're back. So, we're about to install the Bilstein shocks here. Zoom out a little bit. About to install the Bilstein shocks here. You want the writing to be right side up. Um, so what that means for this install is the boot will be up here. Uh, we'll, we'll attach the boot up here. Um, and the shiny bottom of the shock, uh, the pretty part, will be on the bottom. So uh, if anyone gets to look under the truck, um, we'll see the nice pretty Bill Steins that uh, we're installing today. All right. So as I mentioned earlier, it's nice to keep your bolts where you took them out to help with the install. Slide that bad boy in. And then, since I'm replacing the upper, the upper shock nut um, with this Thurin piece, um, we'll be putting a new nut in there. Um, if we look at the old one, <coughs> It's not in too bad a shape if uh, I had easy access to the backside of this. Um, and I didn't have these Theron manufacturing pieces. I would probably uh, reuse this after hitting it with a wire brush um, and some uh, anti-seize. One thing I like to do, um, as I mentioned earlier on when I messed up and I didn't get the bolt all the way off, is uh, sometimes the sh bolt can seize inside the, the bushing, uh, the metal part of the bushing. And uh, to help prevent that, uh, whenever I install new shocks, I use some anti-seize on the area, uh, on the bolt that's nice and clean in this case. Uh, let's see. Uh, on the area that's nice and clean, um, that's the area that was not exposed to the elements and was um, stuck inside that, sh that shock. Um, so, uh, just a little bit will take you a long way on this anti-seize. Um, so, let's see, just brush this on. Especially on the shank here, uh, that's a little bit wider than the threads. That's the part that'll seize first. Um, I know based on reading a lot of internet forums, uh, there's mixed opinions on putting any kind of lubricant or foreign substance on the threads that are engaged with the nut. Um, so just for, uh, since I'm not in a area where I'm worried about a lot of rust, just want to do a little bit. I'll, uh, I'm not going to put any on the threads. Um, I have in the past, and on my 2010 Jeep Wrangler, um, and I haven't ever run into any problems with that. So, uh, I, uh, I go both ways. Just trying to get the nut threaded on a little bit by hand. I always try to um, thread bolts on by hand. Um, if you try, if you have access to the impact wrenches, uh, you can cross thread bolts really easy, especially those lug nuts. Oh, I can't see that. I was tapping on the lug nuts. Now those are really easy to thread uh, cross thread on and cause yourself problems. So I've got it hand threaded. Um, the new nuts have um, a nylon, they're a self-locking um, nut, so they've got nylon there. And I'm gonna use my little impact gun not to over torque the shock nuts. I'm gonna 
set that to. Just gonna kind of get that in there for now. Uh, it's still a little loose, uh, but that's okay. Now comes the fun part. All right, and now we're back. As you can see, um, you want the shock, according to Bill Stein, uh, you want the shock with the lettering up. Uh, kind of walking when going over bumps on the highway uh, and just kind of the truck feeling a little off. Um, so decided to replace these uh, with those Bill Steins. Uh, again, I'm going to uh, put some anti-seize on this guy. It might be a trick someone else knows. generally use boot strength and then a uh, pry bar. Uh, the shocks that have the bolt on the top don't always work nicely. All right, got that part way in. And now the plan is to use this pry bar to help get it the rest of the way. All right, presto. Again, threading the bolt on. Hopefully this is centered enough for everybody until uh, I get to a good stopping point and I'll hit it a little bit with the impact. Slipping off a bit. But we're really close. Probably leave it there uh, until we get our torque stick out. All right. So the torque spec for both the upper and lower uh, rear shock bolts um, is 100 foot pounds. So I've uh, using my torque wrench. I've already got it set to 100 foot pounds. Uh, they all vary and. I will. 100 foot pounds is a good amount in this angle. I will uh, torque it until this one is, until it clicks. And now, my uh, lever stick is a little stuck. I'll give this a little twist. Or a hammer. See if I can break this loose. Oh, all right. Lower shock bolt installed. Let me move you guys around to the upper. And now we will do the upper shock bolt. Learn from me. Make sure you have the right size on your torque wrench. It's a 21 millimeter, not a 7 8. All right, 
100 foot pounds. And now that tab is in there, uh, ready for the next time we change these out. So let's finish off this job. We got two more tasks to do, uh, which is put the fender liner back in, throw the wheel on, and then we'll torque the wheel down. All right, goodbye, pretty shock. And it'll be important to remember that hidden bolt uh, on the truck. Um, we'll want to try to finagle the liner in, and then in all likelihood put that bolt in first. Uh, it's also a good idea which I didn't do, to check to make sure all your clips that those screws go into are in. Um, as we saw, the clips on, along the frame um, actually were clipped onto the tub of the truck. Um, you know, those popped out. And we want to make sure we get those back in. So those wall clips on this backside shifted a little bit while I was putting the fender liner back in. Um, but it kind of, once it falls into place, it kind of fits there. We'll take our handful of screws and that 5 16 bit, and we will install everything back together um, to help hold the fender in place. I'm going to put the back screws in first. And uh, you can kind of see where the screw, the washers on the screws were. Uh, I always try to line those back up. Uh, just trying to get everything back in as close to in the same position as I could. A little off. All right. I'll put that hidden one in first because there's a, the hidden screw is right here. There's a fender screw right here and another one up here. So as soon as you put those two in, you won't be able to get to this one. And it'll, it'll really help to have a light. Uh, if you're doing these by hand, kind of use a flashlight. Uh, you can kind of get an idea of where the, the hole on the fender is. And uh, that can help you get it in the right spot. Um, these screws are pretty aggressive. I could see there being a potential of not getting it in the right hole and you're kind of just drilling into the fender. Um, it won't be as secure of a fit. Versus the metal clips. And in a perfect world, as you put more and more of these in, it should help line the fender up.
now the fun begins. So there we go. Alright. Everybody can see that. Yes, you can. All right, so you can see here I was, wasn't careful enough, and uh, it's not tightening down. I must have missed that screw hole. <gasps> go up here first. I can see that one. That's going to wrap things up here for our review and install of the Bilstein B8 5100 series rear shock for 0 to 1 inch lift, fitting 2009 to 2018 four wheel drive Ram 1500s without air ride, excluding the Rebel models. Thanks so much for watching, and as always, for all things Ram, be sure to keep it right here at americantrucks.com.